The Huawei Nova series has always been a popular and successful one since it often offers a balanced combination of fashion-forward design and capable hardware. This year, Huawei introduces new and exciting features like a 120Hz curved OLED screen and support for 100W charging. But the main draw of the all-new Nova 10 series are its cameras. Hey guys, it's Vika and you're with The Modern Creatures. Today's video is a little bit different, it's a little bit unique since we are going to take the Nova 10 Pro out on another adventure and see what its cameras can do, most especially these front-facing cameras that Huawei is really proud of this year. Let's talk specs first. On this Nova 10 Pro, we have dual front-facing cameras composed of a 60-megapixel ultra-wide angle autofocus for its main and an 8-megapixel close-up camera. These dual cameras are exclusive to the Pro variant, however, but you will still be getting that 60-megapixel main shooter with the Nova 10. Being a selfie-centric device, Huawei also equips the front cameras with dual stabilization, both electronic and optical, and introduces the industry's first instant autofocus with quad face detection. We also have optical zoom up to two times and digital zoom up to five times. On the rear, we have an upgraded version of last year's 50 megapixel RYYB Ultra Vision camera found on the Nova 9. It's accompanied by the usual 8 megapixel ultra wide macro and 2 megapixel portrait. Here, we only have electronic image stabilization, but zoom capabilities remain the same as the selfie shooters. So before we get into some sample footage, let's take a quick tour of the camera UI and get to know some of its modes and features. Alright, so let's do a quick camera UI tour, check out its features and some of its modes. Starting here with the leftmost part of the UI with night mode, which is something you would use in low light situation. You can use it with up to two times zoom for and you can also use it with the front facing, of course. Hi guys! But it's still pretty bright out, so we won't need to use that. Let's move on to portrait mode. So over here on portrait mode, this is what you will use if you want that nice background blur. There are a couple of effects here you can choose from too that can change the shape of the blur, but I normally just stick to the basic. For portrait mode, you do have more extensive beauty options. Beautification options, I mean. Oh, uh, for the front facing, forgot to mention, like, uh, we do have multiple uh, angles. So we have the wide angle camera right here. That's my camera over there. We have the one time zoom. This is my usual, this is my go to. But if you also need it, we have a two times zoom right there. And this is optical. You have digital zoom as well that can go up to five times. Let's switch over to the photo mode. Again, we have those zoom options for the front facing camera. We also have some color filters right here. Then of course your flash options. For the rear camera, we have a similar setup in terms of zoom. We have the ultra wide right here, then your main camera, then the two times optical zoom, which can extend to 10 times digital zoom. That controller is dirty. <laughs> Up top here, you can toggle the AI camera on or off. You also have your flash options and some color filters. For video, we don't have anything too unfamiliar here as well. When you press record, this will turn into a slider that you can use to control your zoom. As you can see here, we can go all up to the wide and then up to one times zoom. It will automatically switch cameras, then all the way up to two times for optical and up to six times zoom digital for video. For recording options, you do top out at 4K at 30 FPS, but if you head to 1080p, you will be able to access up to 60 FPS if that's what you need. One of my favorite things on this camera is that even if you're recording in 4K, you can easily switch between cameras. Pretty cool. Up next, we have vlog mode here, which offers you quite a number of lenses and effects that can help you be, oops, let's go back, uh, a little bit more creative when you're shooting. So let's go through these real quick. So let's begin with the rear over here where you shoot with the rear camera, then of course a front. Then you can shoot both front and rear at the same time. So we can do that. This is the rear camera up here and this is the front and you can even switch it out immediately. We do have the picture-in-picture -in, -picture in here. 
Moving on, we do have rear and rear next. Now this uses both the rear lenses of this phone and you can shoot something like a multi-angle type of shot. So one is zoom and one is using the main camera. Next we have front and front where you use both front cameras at the same time. So that's zoom and your main camera. Then we have picture in picture, which is something I would have, I have been using more often. And again, you can switch it out easily using this top button right here. And of course, you can switch cameras anytime with this button. So now we switch and this is the front now and this is the rear again. This is the front now and this is the rear. And then we also have rear and rear picture in picture. And of course, a front and front picture in picture. That is for the lenses. And then you also have a tab right here for the text. This is pretty cool. Let's start here with showcase focus. Focus priority is given to the objects that are in the center of the frame. This is really good for like unboxing and things. I am vlogging, for example, and then I want to show a product maybe, and then I'll just do this and it'll automatically focus on the object in front of me and when I take it out, it'll focus on my face. So that's really cool. And it's really seamless, you guys, as you can see, then out there. Next up, we have follow focus. Now, this is something that you can only use with the rear camera. What it does is that it tracks a subject, whether or not it's moving and it will keep it in focus. So next we have a portrait video, again, also only for the rear and it also blurs the background and keeps the subject in focus on more we actually have a lot more on here and I'm not gonna go through each and every one but let me go to pro mode because I wanted to show you guys that while we have pro photo we also have pro video now that's really cool because I think it's something I would personally use more often we also have slow motion here it can go all the way up to 960 FPS at 720p you can also switch over to 1080p that'll give you 120 FPS Quickly running through everything else here, we have time lapse, moving picture, stickers, documents, super macro, high res, and story creator. With story creator, you can easily edit your footage and create something really cool out of the camera app. So that's your quick walkthrough of the camera UI on the Nova 10 Pro. And I guess it's about time we talk about its performance. First and on a general note, one of my favorite qualities about the Nova 10 Pro is the flexibility it provides when shooting. Whether taking photos or videos, you're not only given a lot of room to be creative with all the modes and features available, but you're also being supplied with technology and features that can allow you to use these cameras in a variety of situations. Having the ability to switch between front and rear cameras even when shooting in 4K is something incredibly useful for vloggers, I would think. And pairing the main camera with a pretty good ultra wide was a smart choice since it again adds versatility when shooting. We also have a zoom lens for the rear which is common but interestingly you can also zoom in with the front facing camera. The optical zoom is good enough to retain sharp details provided there's enough light. If you guys want to see the zoom capabilities of this phone let's just see all of them. So this is our wide, so our 8 megapixel wide camera then let's go to our this is our main camera it switches automatically then we will zoom all the way. Six times zoom is the max, and that is the quality that you're getting at six times zoom. For stabilization, as mentioned earlier, the front cameras do have EIS and OIS, while the rear cameras only have EIS. But in my time with this device, I've found that I was really happy with the performance, and I think it would satisfy most users out there. As you can see in our sample footage, we can get smooth movement for video even when walking and for photos, the stabilization helps in capturing smaller details. One of the features that I wanted to see in action on this phone was the instant autofocus with quad face detection which Huawei says is an industry first. The camera shifted focus so fast and quite seamlessly that for the most part I had to pay attention to see it happen. When compared to the usual PD focus found on most smartphones, Huawei says its AF with quad phase detection offers a significant improvement. Again, it's another great feature for content creators to do a lot of show and tell or unboxing videos since it's easier to put things in focus. There's even a specific spotlight focus mode made for just these things. I also appreciate having pro mode here both for photos and videos. For video in particular, I love having control over the camera's focus so I can really maximize the Nova 10 Pro's natural bokeh. 
Details are crisp and colors are vibrant, and you can take advantage of that SLR-like bokeh to create more interesting compositions like in these photos. On the software side, we have Huawei XD Fusion Engine and Huawei Vision Photography. These also help in recreating that natural bokeh and enhancing the overall image. Taking this photo, for example, the software was able to bring back the details in the sky, which makes for a better image. We're also getting assurance of true-to-life color thanks to the P3 wide color gamut support on both front and rear cameras. Low-light performance isn't as exceptional but still quite noteworthy. The stabilization does help in keeping things sharp, but it's also best to keep still for a beat so details are better seen. Apart from its cameras, there are a couple features on the Nova 10 Pro that I think help contribute to making it a great phone for vlogging, photography, or videography. As you may already know, with most phones, if you're using the camera for a long period of time or if you're using things at max settings, the battery tends to drain faster. So what does Huawei do about this? The company designed the Nova 10 Pro with support for 100 watt supercharge. When you're in a pinch, Huawei says the Nova 10 Pro's turbo charging mode can fill up the battery from 20% to 80% in just 10 minutes. This is a really great addition to the Nova 10 Pro in my opinion because you're then able to appreciate a lot of its features. Apart from its cameras, we also have up to 120Hz refresh rate. I didn't have to worry about opting for that high refresh rate which I really enjoy since I know I can quickly top up the device's battery. Now we've talked quite extensively about these phones' cameras and you've seen a lot of photos and videos, but we can't let this video end without talking about the Huawei Nova 10's design. It is incredibly eye-catchy after all. This year, the members of the Huawei Nova 10 series are sporting that new and extra flashy star orbit ring that lives on a slightly shimmering fingerprint-resistant back. There are two colors available, Starry Silver and Starry Black, but on both, the Star Orbit Ring camera module remains the star of the show. For the Nova 10 and the Nova 10 Pro, we also get a 6.78-inch curved OLED display, which adds to the overall elegance of its design. The Nova 10 SE, however, will have a full-view display instead. As a photography or videography partner, it also helps that the display offers P3 wide color for true-to-life reproduction. Now, now, something that surprised me with the Nova 10 Pro is its ability to stay cool even during intensive tasks. Not once did I feel it heat up to an uncomfortable or even a noticeable level, even when I was shooting for long periods of time. This is thanks to the Huawei Ultra Generation VC liquid cooling structure, which effectively distributes and dissipates heat, resulting in lower internal temperatures for more stable performance. The Huawei Nova 10 Pro is also incredibly pocketable as it's one of the thinnest phones around. The Nova 10 at just less than 7mm thin and at just 168 grams, while the Pro variant just slightly thicker at 7.88mm thin and weighs 191 grams. Here's a quick look at the key differences of each variant. With the Nova 10 series and other Huawei devices as well, you'll gain access to the ecosystem and of course, Super Device. One of my most used features of Super Device is multi-screen collaboration. But apart from that, I also love the ease of transferring photos and videos between devices. Being able to just drag my photos into my tablet is incredibly convenient for me and from there I can continue working or editing photos with whatever app I want. The built-in editor of the Nova 10 Pro is already great but of course you can always head to the Huawei app gallery or pedal search where you can find tons of other apps whether for editing, games, or whatever you may need. The Nova 10 Pro claims to have one of the best selfie cameras around and having used both front and rear cameras quite extensively, I can highly recommend it to the casual content creators out there. Apart from offering high quality photos and videos, the Nova 10 Pro is also equipped with technologies and features that help elevate your shooting experience. From its elegant design, versatile and balanced cameras, and even 100 watt supercharge, the Huawei Nova 10 Pro isn't so far in calling itself one of the best selfie cameras around. 
And I guess that's all we have for today's video on the Huawei Nova 10 Pro. I hope you guys enjoyed this new style of video we're doing. And if you did, let us know in the comments. Of course, if you have questions about this device, feel free to leave them there too. And if you haven't yet, please do consider subscribing to our channel. And don't forget to visit our website and our other social media pages for more news, features, and reviews. Once again, this is Vika. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.